Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to all our Heart to Heart with Friends Bible study. Um, it's Thursday afternoon late. I've had a good day. I hope you have. Um, I came to my study about 1.30, and uh, I thought, well, I'm going to sit down and uh, get into Philippians a little bit. So I asked God to speak to my heart, opened up the book, and you know what? I didn't get past verse 6 because verse 6 happens to be one of my favorite verses. And it's such an encouragement uh, in these days. And I thought, well, you know what? If it encourages my heart, I'm going to share it with you. Uh, so anyway, I was uh, writing a few notes out. And uh, then Murray came in and he uh, taught me a history lesson. Uh, we talked about the Civil War and uh, just enjoyed a good time and uh, sort of putting, uh, giving me a little perspective uh, on what's happening in our country today. So uh, we had a good time doing that. And then I got back in Philippians. So these are some of the things that uh, I want to share with you that God put on my heart and uh, why this verse means so much to me. It uh, is in the book of Philippians in that very first chapter, and Paul says uh, that God has begun a good work in us and that he's going to continue that work until the day he calls us home. And uh, so uh, he begins that work in us. And, you know, I like to think in first grade terminology or first grade thinking, uh, like we go and we catch a fish and then we clean that fish and scale it. Well, God catches us, and uh, he, he catches us, and uh, he does that quick, quickly. And then he begins to scale and clean us, and that is a long process. Uh, it's an ongoing process. And so um, he catches us, we come to him, and then he begins to clean us up. And thank goodness he doesn't do it all at one time. We couldn't stand it for him to show us everything that's wrong about us and try to fix it all at one time. So uh, he has a lot of patience with us. But anyway, uh, his work for us began the day that he sent Jesus to the cross to take our place uh, so that we wouldn't have to die and pay the debt for our sins. So Jesus did that. And then he began his work in us, of course, the day that we came uh, to know him as our Savior. And uh, so we are a work in progress. We will never arrive and uh, be all that God wants us to be. But he has put within our hearts a desire to grow, to become more like him. And he will continue that work. Uh, throughout our lifetime. And uh, our part is uh, really determining the rate at which we do grow. He's uh, there ready, and he is in us through the, uh, his Holy Spirit. He lives in us, and um, he is always ready to teach us. Uh, but sometimes we're a little hesitant, and uh, so he can only work on us uh, to the extent that we allow him to do that and uh, to the time we give him to do that. So if we're going to grow, I think about a little baby grows, uh, it begins to drink milk and uh, you and I begin to grow in our uh, relationship with him uh, as we have a good diet and the good diet uh, that we uh, need to have is one that includes uh, being in the Word of God every day and talking to the Lord in prayer every day. And if we do those two things, then we have, um, we have the things that will help us grow uh, spiritually. And uh, so then the Holy Spirit begins to take the things that God has shown us and it's taught us, and as we apply them in our lives, we begin to grow and change and become more like him. And so uh, this image of God working uh, in us uh, is mentioned a lot of times throughout the scriptures in uh, 1 Peter 2, 5. 
uh, it says that we're like living stones that the Lord is shaping and growing and building up into a spiritual house. And so it paints a picture of our Lord uh, with a chisel in his hand, cutting away at mine and your lives and the things that we don't need, the things that would hinder us in our relationship with him and our usefulness to him. And he chisels those things away and is fashioning us according to the plan and the purpose that he has for our lives. Well, Ephesians 2 is another one of those verses, and uh, it says that we are his masterpiece. We are his workmanship, uh, just as the Lord is, is a painter, and we're the canvas where he's creating a work of art. And you and I will be his masterpiece to do the things that he planned for us to do a long time ago. And uh, then Jeremiah 18, verses 5 and 6, talk about him being the potter, and we're the clay. And he is all, his job is to mold and shape us so that we will be conformed more and more to his image. So what a blessing it is um, to know that God loves us enough that he is patiently working on us. He loves us just as we are, uh, but he loves us too much to let us stay the way we are. And he wants us to become more and more like him. Uh, so it's okay. The world tells us that we need to have it all together. But we are so glad that God says you don't have to have it all together. You can have flaws and you can have failures, and I'm still going to love you. Um, that won't affect my love for you because his love for us is unconditional. And um, so anyway, uh, he is walking daily with us, and uh, he is working to transform our lives. I love Romans 12, too, that says we're not to be conformed to this world, but we're to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That is, as we are in the Word of God, and we're asking the Holy Spirit to teach us, He is showing us things uh, that will change our thinking, so that our thinking will be more aligned with God's thinking. And then, of course, our actions come out of our thinking, and so uh, how we behave and uh, what we do, the things that we do will more be more in line with what God would have us do. So um, those scriptures uh, assure us that God is not done with us yet, that we are a work in progress, that we will never arrive, we will never be all God wants us to be, but we are becoming. Sometimes I tell God, Lord, I'd hate to think I was the best you had, but I want to be. Because, see, God puts within our hearts a want to, a desire to be like him. And um, if we have that desire, then we are going to follow through with the things that will help us to grow and for that to happen. So Jesus is our source of strength. He is our guide. He shows us. He teaches us, shows us how to live. And then he is our strength. He is our enabler for doing the things that please him. So we don't have to feel like we've got it all together because our relationship with him is not based on performance, but um, he just loves us because he loves us. And he loves us on a bad day just as much as he does on a good day. He loves us when we're all dressed up in our church clothes going uh, to teach a Sunday school class or to go to a Bible study as he does on those days when we're just around the house, maybe cleaning commodes and uh, mopping floors. So then Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says, And now, just as you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. And then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. So, in other words, growing is not an option for us as children of God. We are to grow. A baby's going to grow if he gets that milk. And if you and I 
get God's word and prayer, we're going to grow. And uh, we're going to always be becoming. And I've learned in these years that God is a lot more uh, in, in uh, he's, he's more interested in what I'm becoming than what I'm accomplishing. Because if I'm becoming more like him, then the accomplishing will take care of itself. Well, uh, I just thought of a little song uh, that goes right along with that verse. Joel Hemphill uh, had a family group, the Hemphills, he and his wife, Labriska, and I used to listen to him on the Gaither Homecomings back in the 90s. Uh, but he wrote a little song in 1980 that I have loved. He's still working on me. How many of y'all remember that little song? Um, so anyway, and I love singing it. But uh, that little song teaches uh, the truth of this verse. And it reminds us that God never gives up on us. And I think we all need to hear that today. Because the world tells us, people tell us, or people let us know they give up on us. But God will never give up on us. So let me see if I can play a little bit. And we're going to sing the chorus. The chorus is that uh, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be because he's still working on me. And then the first verse, he said, there really ought to be a sign upon my heart. Don't judge me yet. There's an unfinished part. Uh, but I, I'll be better just according to his plan, fashioned by the master's loving hands. So, there really ought to be a sign upon my heart. Don't judge me yet. There's an unfinished part, but I'll, I'll be better. I'll be better, listen, but I'll be better just according to his plan, fashioned by the master's loving hands. And here we go. He's still working on me to make me what I need to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be, cause he's still working on me. And then in the mirror of his word, reflections that I see make me wonder why he never gave up on me but he loves me as i am and helps me when i pray remember he's the potter and i'm the clay and he's still working on me to make me what i need to be Took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. The how love, how loving and patient he must be, cause he's still working on me. Well, I didn't work on the song near as much as I did. Uh, on studying the verse, but I hope that you've enjoyed that little song, and I hope you will uh, think on that verse, Philippians 1, 6, and uh, let it be an encouragement to you that if you are a child of God, God began a good work in you the day that you came to know him, and he has not given up on you. If you don't feel like you're growing and moving forward in your relationship with him, you can start today and tell him that you want to grow, that you want to keep moving toward him and becoming uh, who he wants you to be. And he will do his part. And then to know that uh, we will never arrive, but we will have the joy of becoming more and more like him 
as we journey on together through life. So I love you so much. I've enjoyed it, and uh, we'll uh, see each other again in a day or two. Um, I love you.